I just started the recording. And if it's some, as people come online, if they do, I'll re remind them that it, it is being recorded. And the way I like to put it is it will now exist forever. Uh, if your voice goes on to this line, everybody's going to know about it from now till the end of time. Uh, so if you assume that, then you're going to be real careful about giving out your social security number or other vital statistics about yourself uh, in a recording format. <laughs> also know that uh, these things can be rebroadcast and resold and all that kind of stuff that I do. Sometimes I give it away. Eric and I were just talking about how I could market them and for a little bit of something like that. So that all that kind of stuff can happen. So just know that. But it's way cool. This is Start Meeting, S-T-A-R-T-M-E-E-T-I-N-G. And it's the coolest, best thing that I have found for recording stuff like this. Uh, and I know Eric has watched the recordings. They're pretty good, aren't they? They, Very much so, yes. Right. They they really work well. So better than other things that I have tried. And I've been at this webinar game for ooh, seven or eight years now. So I started and started the I started in the dark ages of it and now this has come up pretty good. So we're going and we got one, two, three still got the same three people. Hello, Bob. I haven't heard you yet. Bob Robert is on his telephone. It yes. says online. Hello. Hi. And Bob, where are you calling from? Los Alamitos, California. Oh, my goodness. Part of the way to Australia. Uh, <laughs> and we have, Eric on, we have Eric online who's all the way to Australia. He is in Australia. And I don't know where Matthew's from. Where are you from, Matthew? I'm in uh, New York City. Oh, my. I was just there last week. Nice. You, pr you probably saw me going by on Times Square, right? I'm not sure of it. Yeah, New York City, that tiny little place. Uh, yes. Whoa. So, what part are you in, New York City? Uh, I'm in Manhattan. I'm in Harlem. You're in Harlem. Okay, up there, up there in the north end, other yep, side of the exactly. Central Park. Yeah, cool. Right on top of Central Park. Yep. 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 That's where uh, I was up close to there. Uh, got close up there. What up? A little bit past the museum of what? Uh, natural history. Natural history. Yep, right, on the right. West side. On the west side. So I was up a little bit past that. So cool. I love New York City. I'm trying to get uh, uh, Dennis Tersh. I shouldn't say try. He's working on getting me to come do a live uh, something there in a few months. So that'd be great. Yeah. So I'll be. Hopefully, be down there. It's relatively, yeah, it'd be relatively close. And so, are you familiar with the Matrix, the Act Matrix? I'm just asking. You talk, doesn't you're talking matter. To Matthew, or were you talking to? I'm him? talking to anybody. I was actually talking to you, New York City. I, I, I am, I am uh, a little familiar with it. I've had, uh, I took a class uh, for my master's in Act. So, so I'm cool. familiar, but I need, I need more, I need more training. So. Oh, good. Okay, and now I'll get with my first plug. I just earlier, like up till 4:45 or so, was working on uh, the next kind of permutation of trainings I'm going to try, which is uh, I'm calling it an eight-week training. You start two weeks ahead of time with some reading materials, and then after two weeks we do four webinars, and then you get two more weeks of follow-up kind of stuff. And I'm going to do sort of these webinar titles, but stretched out over a lot more training. And it's only four students in each one of them. I mean four. One, two, three, four. So that means we'll play and uh, you get to practice the techniques and hopefully get really pe get people into this. So now the first one of those is for trauma memories. And that starts on October the 1st. And I just put it up on my meeting dashboard thing, whatever it's called. What's it called? Uh, constant contact. Uh, you hit spot. I'll send out an announcement pretty quick. So uh, anyway, so that's a little plug for that. And now we get started with Act Made Extraordinarily Easy or some kind of uh, title like that. And so let's get started. Uh, there it is, Act Made Easy. And I started the recording. I'm now up on my whiteboard, so I'm going to I'm going to erase that stuff. 
as you guys know what this is. This is called the matrix diagram. And so you'll hear me keep running, returning back to that act made easy. So does anyone know what the outcome of act is? Have you, in your readings about act, have you heard what the outcome is? Psychological flexibility. Aha, Eric's been around. You're, <laughs> you're close. You're close. Oh, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm, I'm oh, prepared for me. this. Somebody's got feedback going. Oh, we got that. Okay, good. Anybody else? This uh, is a contact Steve. Contact with the present moment. Nope. Nope. That's pretty good, though. I like it. I like it. This is actually a Steve Hayes quote that you'll see crop up. These other people have said it as well. And they'll say, and it goes in quotes, the outcome of act is, and then it's blank. It is two words after that. Anybody know? Mm -hmm. Okay. Have I made the suspense good enough? Da -da 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 -da. All that drum roll stuff in business. So the outcome of act is a process, period. That's the quote. So the outcome of ACT is a process. So let's discuss that because we're, it's about making it easy, okay? I'm not, I'm not straying off of that. So if you get in your mind that it's not about contact with the present moment and that it's not about, you know, psychological flexibility per se, We'll add that on here in just a minute, but it's a process. So when we say that the outcome is a process, does that sound like you're getting to a finish line? So the outcome of act is a finish line. How does that? So you've gotten some Not at all. No. Right, right. And that's that's what the most therapies are set up like. They're set up as if you get someplace, you get to where you can fix something. That's the, the fix-it mentality that they talk about. Instead, the outcome of ACT is that you, the, the therapist or the coach or whatever you are, can notice that the person you're working with is now spending, you know, the majority, and that's what I'd say, you know, 12 or more hours a day or something in the act process. They're doing the process of this act stuff. So you're actually getting them into a set of behaviors, both internal and external behaviors that are a process. So in my mind, you're, you're watching a person sort of spin and, and do things, and they're working. There's always, in English, there's always I-N-G. So really, they're processing, and you're watching them do that, that, that stuff of, of being in the, this act uh, processing. So first of all, remember that. So if you'll write that down, you know, so you know, get your little piece of paper out and say, okay, this is Kevin's simple way of learning act. The outcome of act, we'll capitalize that, is a process. Okay, that's the Steve Hayes quote. I don't know, first, second book, I don't know, somewhere in there. That's the, the outcome of act is a process, okay? That's to get us away from it's not a fix, it's a process. So we got that? We got it. Well, good, 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 yep. good, good. Yep. So next, we're going to add on the next, the next thing that makes it easy, and this is what Eric had already picked up from me, uh, and uh, we're going to add it on. The outcome of act is a process. I want to erase these because now we're going to do Kevin Polk. <laughs> is a process of, let's see, uh, I'm going to use a lot of ING words here. Working toward. And now comes in psychological flexibility.
Okay, so now you can write that down. The outcome of ACT is a process of working towards psychological flexibility. I'm just giving you a moment to soak that in and other people. So, if that's the outcome and you're working towards psychological flexibility, that would mean that whenever you get into the same, you know, space, whether it be on a telephone or on a webinar or in person with somebody, either individually or in a group, what are you sort of metaphorically working toward if you're doing this ACT thing, this ACT therapy thing or this ACT coaching thing, this ACT business thing? What are you doing? Now read what I just said. What are you what are you about doing? How do you know when things are you're you you've gotten to in big quotes where you want to go with a person or a group of people? Reread what I said. The outcome of ACT is a process of working towards psychological flexibility. So how do you know when they're there? Could I suggest maybe you'd notice the client has uh, an awareness of choice. Oh, there you go. How about you, Matthew? How would you think you would <coughs> notice if somebody were there? <coughs> Working towards their, I mean, trying to live their life towards their values. Okay. Working towards okay. Their values. okay, that's one. Could somebody become rigid in their work toward values? That is psychologically less flexible in their work toward values? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Three a curveball there, Eric. Sorry. <laughs> that's one of the curveballs of ACT. That's that's the problem. You can get hung up over there on the working toward value side and lose sight of the psychological flexibility. So, true, true. But So we want to combine those two up, that they're working toward values and, but staying in contact with psychological flexibility. How's that to complete that sentence? So if we said that, so to use sort of Eric's thing, so to, to notice that somebody is talking about behaving toward their values and staying in contact with their psychological flexibility, if we were noticing a person doing that, we would say, yep, okay, they're there. They got to the outcome I was looking for. We would hear that and see that. So you get that, Bob? Bob's online. Yeah, I do. Yep, you get it. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. And it makes it easier because now you're not going to get lost in the forest, uh, off in the thickets of the golf course or whatever. <laughs> you're going to have an idea because you're going to be looking for that. And if you get practice being able to look for that outcome, to notice that outcome or to hear that process going on because it's a series of behaviors. And so just because the person behaved that way this way doesn't mean they're going to do it next tomorrow or next week or something. So it's hearing how they continue that process of working towards psychological flexibility. Uh, that's, the, that's the stuff of this. And indeed, you do want to hear them working toward values, but that sort of shows up. That, 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 that happens. But if you keep that target in mind, that helps out. That makes this stuff a whole lot easier. So when you first started reading an ACT book, did you know that was the target? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yep, there's the problem right there. You didn't, and I didn't either. Probably took me several years to figure out that was the target. Uh, and the problem with that, and, and I, is just it's just that since you don't know the target and you don't really know what you're working toward, 
you, you can't see it. You don't know. And so you end up doing diffusion for some reason. You know, you're doing these diffusion exercises with somebody for some reason, but you're not sure what it looks like when they sort of get diffused, right? Or you're doing values work, and they sort of kind of talk about values, but you don't know really what this process thing is, uh, uh, of what there is. And then you can get hooked up, and lots and lots and lots and lots of people, including myself back in the day, get hooked up on values. And so oh, it's all about working toward valued life directions. That's it. It's all valued life directions. And then hopefully one day you sort of go, oh, wow, well, you know, people could get sort of rigid over on that side. <laughs> so they go. I can get down my stock. Uh, and I, then I really did, like that expression, working toward. I, I think that's a, a very powerful element of that statement in that it's a practice. You never finish. You never finish. Aha, so you've <laughs> come back. The outcome of act is a process. You, don't finish, you don't finish processes. You keep processing. Mm. Mm. And that's it. That it's spinning. It's it was of course Steve Hayes is an English speaker, and so he has the I N G thing to show I N G on the end of words to show action, and it's processing. So maybe the outcome of act is we can change this. There, see, we can improve on anything, right? The outcome of act is processing. <laughs> And we would do, let me see, I'm pretty sure then we'd have a semicolon. <laughs> of working towards psychological is processing, semicolon. Aha, uh -huh. take out the, uh, I'm going to say editor like crazy right now, right? <laughs> working towards psychological flexibility, something like that. But it's spinning. There's always an ING onto it. I'm just stressing this so because in the next several minutes I'll keep talking about that. Because if you have that target in mind, it's just a lot easier to stay on your path to getting someplace. And it is absolutely not any different than if you were on some, you know, very big plane that, you know, a prairie kind of plain grassland, or in a desert, let's say a desert, there you go, it's even better, desert, and as far as you can see all around you, there's just sand, 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 and then way off over in the distance, you can see like a tree, I guess it's an oasis in the desert. Now, does that oasis help you out if you want to get someplace? <laughs> It, it well, might do, but it'd be a it, lucky thing. <laughs> well, it'd be lucky, but I mean, you can see it. I mean, you could really see it over there. What are you most likely going to start doing? Yeah, moving, moving, moving toward. toward that border. And you can probably, just because of the miracle of the human eye and the human body, you will just sort of do the right motions, and you will head almost uh, in a beeline straight toward that oasis. Because there's nothing in your way, right? It's just a desert, so you can just walk right over there, right? That's the idea of this. But if there was no tree and there was this, there was this sand all around you, can you start walk? Ended up walking in circles, and that's the problem. And mm. really, that goes to the fundam fundamentals of act, and it's why act does have the values piece. In it, it's because it gives you a target, some some truth. Uh, it's called a truth criterion. It's a thing to work toward. The problem is they talk a lot about giving a person a truth criterion, that is some valued life direction to move the to toward, and then do a test to say, well, is, are these behaviors that I'm doing, are these behaviors working to move me in that valued life direction? That's the test of act. They didn't really give it to the therapist, did they? Or the coach that's using it. You, you, you would think it's moving toward values, but it's not. The outcome of act is this processing and working towards psychological flexibility. Uh, what you're doing is instilling, influencing people towards psychological flexibility. 
Uh, and they didn't really explicitly state that. So if you can get that target clearly in your head, you three people that are on with me now and all the people listening mm. on a recording, it's going to make this thing extraordinarily easier. Now, Eric, did you expect what I was going to say was going to be very complicated? <laughs> no, no, I didn't. <laughs> Eric's been with me before. I and I'm not wasn't going to come on with a title like "Act Made Extraordinarily Easy" and then you give you some complicated way of doing extraordinarily easy. No, 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 no. I want to give it to you as if it's a it's an oasis that you can walk toward in the desert, and you will discover how to get there. Now, I'm going to give you some things that you can use to move and walk in that direction so that you can look up and say, oh, am I moving in that direction? And if I'm not moving in that direction, I can correct my behaviors and go about moving in that direction again. But once again, the basic direction is you're inviting people into the processing of how to increase or, or maintain their psychological flexibility. Mm. That's what you're up to okay, in the presence the, of values. Right. I, this is an important distinction I think you're making, and I'm, it's really good to have it spelt out like this. But also, we're not developing psychological flex or working towards developing psychological flexibility for the sheer hell of it. There is oh. a purpose. There's a re this is a stepping stone of capability so that something becomes possible. Yes, moving toward and efficiently learning what works to move toward values becomes possible. Yes. And that's where we often, as you correctly point out, sort of get stuck. And we think, ah, yeah. that's what it's for. It's the, the values bit. That's it. But, you can yeah. get stuck there. So yeah. first, and really, and it's not that first, it's anything. You, you can establish the values part of ACT so that somebody knows that they have something important or someone important in their life to move toward. That's fine, but they need, as far as we know scientifically, and this is not speaking weirdo stuff, this is scientific stuff, we know that they need some psychological flexibility to be able to efficiently learn the behaviors that will move them toward who and what's important to them. And now we're going to get into, to do that, they need a nice balance between noticing their five senses experiencing in a moment and their mental experiencing in a moment. And that's the moments after they've done the move that at least they predicted was a move toward psycho I mean I'm sorry, was a move toward their, what was important to them or who was important to them. Because nobody's perfect. You 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 do a well intentioned move that you thought was a move toward uh, I'm sorry toward your valued life direction, but are you guaranteed of it working? The behavior working to move you in that direction? Sadly not. Not, no, you're not. The life is not that way. So you, you do the behavior and then you notice the consequences. <laughs> of the behavior. You notice the five senses experiencing. So if you did a move toward for someone else, well you notice their face, you notice their body stance, you notice their language, you notice if, you know, the effect that you were looking for and moving toward the other person is indeed there. But you also notice your own mental experiencing, your inside your skin experiencing, you notice, and of course both of those happen at the same time, so you notice those two things. And by noticing those, you can adjust your future behaviors to continue doing those behaviors or not, or at least modify doing that behavior so it works better in the future. You see what I'm talking about? Efficiently learning what works to move toward what's important to you. That's what you're setting up, this process of learning what works to move toward 
what's important to you, uh, who or what's important to you. That's this thing. That's this out. That's this processing of act. Uh, and if you get that in your head, all this stuff gets a whole lot easier. Uh, it uh, because you yourself will start using that same stuff. Uh, so that's first. So I've gone to the, the, the vertical line. Hopefully everybody can see the matrix up here. And I have the five senses experiencing up here. And I have the mental experiencing down here. And those are just simply the two sets of experiences, also known as contexts, C-O-N-T-E-X-T, -E -E, context. So here's your five senses context, and here's your mental experiencing context. And by noticing the act, the matrix actually starts with, okay, take out a pen and notice the pen through your five senses, blah, 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 blah. Okay, put the pen away out of your five senses, and now let's recall noticing the pen through your mental experiencing. See the pen, hear the pen, da, 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 the pen. And now notice the difference between your five senses experiencing of the pen and your mental experiencing of the pen. That little exercise is si simply bringing people into contact with that, yes, there's my five senses experiencing, and yes, there's my mental experiencing, and yes, there's a difference, but I can notice both of these, eventually if I practice that enough, I can notice both of these and use it to learn what works to move me toward what's important to me. Now, by the way, before we get too far, both away and toward moves can move you toward what's important to you. And that'll, that's a little mental trick that you need to pick up, too. Uh, quick example. If you forget to heed the thing that you learned in New York City, in Harlem. There we go, Harlem. Okay, Bob, you're at Harlem. You forget what your mother told you, and you step off a curb without looking both ways. Because you were told to look both ways, weren't you? Yep. But you forget, and you step out on the curb, and you look to the left, and there's one of them big old double-decker sightseeing buses coming right at you. Are you with me, Bob? I'm with you. Right. What shows up inside of you? If you're a normal human being, and there's a bus coming at you, what kind of thing shows up inside of you? Starts with an F. Yeah, Fear. Fear. <laughs> fear shows up inside of you. And if you're a normal human being, what's the next thing that you do? You step back. Right you on. step back. And that's called an away move. And by gosh, for your health, it's a really workable away move. <laughs> okay, so don't for a moment think that away moves are bad and toward moves are good. They can both be very workable. It's just whether you get stuck or not. Remember the psychological flexibility thing? There's nothing that says these are good and these are bad. They are both can be workable, but we just got to keep these working toward who and what's important to me in a psychologically flexible way. Uh, and that way I can keep in those away moves that are very workable. Uh, so uh, you know, the, all kinds of stuff like that come into play. So we do that, so then, and, and really, that's, that's the biggie. This is the mindfulness line of ACT as well. So when you people get, really get sort of, oh, I love ACT, it's so mindful, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that's, that's all well and good, but ACT is uh, very much rooted in science, uh, not just, just you know, pure mindfulness stuff. And I'm not against mindfulness. Don't, don't say I'm belittling it. I'm not. It's just really about this, this center line and noticing these differences so you back up and can notice. And once you do that, it's a little easier to notice how it feels to move toward and how it feels to move away. And if you recall right now, if you recall how it feels to move toward, let's say, someone who is important to you, so you just recall, you know, walking toward them or holding their hand or kissing them or something, move, doing a toward move, versus how it feels to move away from fear like jumping out of the way of a bus. Those are two different feelings, right? Right, those are two different sets of feelings, and it's just noticing the difference between those two feelings. This is a toward feel, and this is an away feel. 
And you just notice the difference between those two, and that backs you up. And noticing those two differences gives you the, I'll just say, psych flex, the psychological flexibility. And that sets you up for this efficient learning process. It's that simple. It's, it's, don't make it any harder than that. And if you keep uh, that in mind, so if I, so, so the basic thing, Eric, Matthew, and Bob, and all the people online, is that you get this matrix process started, you know, with this, this way and this way. Uh, and then the whole point of the enterprise is to get them to this processing and working towards psychological flexibility. And we'll finish up this sentence. You know, I'm going to put, whoop, whoop, bad eye. In the presence of, I'm just going to say values. Because you really do need to know what, who and what's important to you. Why do you need to know who and what's important to you? You need a direction. You need a direction. You need a test. Way to go. And, a and a, it, it's the oasis. Remember my oasis story? You need a test. You need to be able to say, okay, is the be are the behaviors that I am doing in the oasis example is are the steps that I am taking moving me toward the oasis? So in the more complicated in life thing, are the behaviors that I'm doing moving me toward who and what's important to me? And that criterion, that's called a criterion, gives you the test. That's the test. You can always run that test. And by the way, you can say, yeah, I jumped out of the way of that bus, and that was really good for my health. Hey, good, you know, <laughs> test, good. So, and then there's other stuff that you can do. You just run that test on your behaviors. But to keep running that test, well, I'll put it to uh, Eric. So is running that test many, many times in your life, every day of the week, really easy to pick up? <laughs> no, this is hard work. <laughs> That's it. It's easy for me to sit here and talk about it. It's yeah. a little different story to get to where you can pull off doing that test several times, many times per day. That's the trick of this stuff, and it's and that's why it's the outcome of act is pro, is processing. It's getting people into that processing of doing that test. Hey, is what I'm doing right now in this current moment moving me toward who and what's important to me? Now the toward moves a little bit tricky there because I could be doing an away move in the moment and it's working just fine. You know, I'm getting out of the way of the bus, and it's good for my health. There you go. It's working. Great. But it's that, that backed-up experience. That's what you're going for. So that's the short. So when you take a longer webinar with me or something, you do four weeks with me or something, and we say act for trauma memories or act for chronic pain, well, those are the pain points that get people stuck, and we just use those particular pain points to work them. And we, and we actually use them as reminders. So if you've got trauma memories, trauma memories are actually a really cool reminder for doing this process, right? I hadn't thought about them that way, had you? Mm. Right. Say, how about pain? Could pain become a cool reminder for doing this process? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's exactly what we're up to. We're up to using the symptoms, using what's ever showing up a lot in their life, and we're going to change the relationship with that thing showing up in their life so that it becomes a cue for doing this test. That's mm. act. That's what, it's counterintuitive. Uh, the old way of thinking about things is, well, we'll get rid of that stuff. <coughs> That's the old mechanistic, you know, we'll, we'll get rid of depression, we'll get rid of anxiety, we'll get rid of this, we'll get rid of that. Actus says, well, you're really not going to get rid of anxiety, and you're not going to get rid of pain, and you're not going to get rid of depression, and you're not going to get rid of any of that stuff. So what you need to do is change your relationship with it. Oh, well, great. That's all well and good. What's that going to do me? 
Well, we better talk about some values here. Who and what's important to you? Great. So now we're going to use that stuff that keeps showing up and bugging at you. We're going to use that as a reminder system for you to step back and notice if what all the behaviors you're doing are working to move you toward who and what's important to you. That's the flip in the relationship. And that's what we work toward with any of these things. So people show up and they have a specific, you know, in quotes, problem. And then we use that problem so that we twist it back on itself and literally use it as a way of people entering into this valued living process. Hmm. Don't worry, you can go back and listen to this recording. I know that's a little bit brain twisting, but that's, that's the counterintuitive nature of ACT. It is literally called that, counterintuitive. You're, most people's brains just aren't used to thinking of it that way. You weren't trained to think of it that way. There's nothing wrong with you. Uh, you're just, especially the Western world is very linear, and it's about getting rid of things and curing things and fixing things. And it's not on this recursive process of how you take something that's bugging you and actually turn it in, to change your relationship with it and turn it into a, literally a positive a way of engaging with a valued living process. So, so that's what you learn with any of my stuff, but it's easy or at least easier. It's extraordinarily easier if you'll pay attention to this target. This, the outcome of ACT is processing, working towards psychological flexibility in the presence of values. And what I mean by that is simply that. Do you know who and what's important to you? Even the mm -hmm. people online, do you know who and what's important to you? Yep. There you go. If you do, that's a big plus. Some of the people you work with or you start to work with will not. You ever work with people that really not really good, sharp on telling you who and what's important to them? Mm, sure. Right. And that is very important. That's why values work is very important. I'm not, I'm not belittling it whatsoever. It's important because if they really don't know it, like right off the tip of their tongue, you know, they don't know it. Well, they, they don't have that truth criteria. They don't have that direction to move toward. They can't run the test. They can't quickly say, is what I'm doing right now in the present moment moving me toward who and what's important to me? They can't run the test because they don't know who and what's important to them. So that's why the values work. Any way you want to do it is important, but it's not the thing. It's just an element combined with uh, uh, psychological flexibility. Uh, so you do a little bit of that, and then you really go back to keeping people psychologically flexible. Now, a little bit more. The way you do that, and Eric has heard this. Whoops, I lost somebody. Oh, Matthew had to step out. But the way you keep doing with this is that as people talk, you invite them into sorting. When this is matrix work. So people will then tell you their stories a little bit. And as they tell you their stories, you can say, oh, that thing about the story you're telling right now, does that go up here in five senses experiencing or does that go down here in mental experiencing? Those, that's thing, those things you're telling me about right now, are they, does it feel like they're moving you towards who and what's important to you or are they moving you away from some unwanted mental experiencing right now? Brings them into the present moment and they do sorting and that increases psychological flexibility because it's also known as perspective taking. So hmm. that... That basic little routine, show in the matrix, do sorting, which automatically reminds them of who and what's important to them. If you keep that process up, uh, you can, uh, well, move them in this direction. In session, it's outside of session that is tricky, and that's why we use the stuff that's showing up in their life that's bugging them. We just transform that into a reminder for doing this process. Mm. Isn't that easy? <laughs> it's 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 <laughs> simple. <laughs> All right, no, no, it's too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now here's your here's your problem, Bob, Eric, and all the people on the recording. 
And I absolutely know what the problem with this is. It's too simple. <laughs> That's what the problem is. The human mind has trouble with the simplicity of it. Uh, uh, you're not asking anybody to stop doing something. Uh, you are asking them to, to, you're inviting them to start noticing a lot more. And you're certainly inviting them to know who and what's important to them a lot better. But past that, you're just inviting them to notice the difference between their sensory and mental experiencing and notice the difference between how it feels to move toward and away. Uh, and you're inviting them to do that. But it's too simple. It just can't work, right? Mm. <laughs> no, <it can't. laughs> I, oh, worry. This happens to me two or three times a week. And I'm the guy that started this, remember, several years ago. And I'll still, times I'll stop in my tracks and go, oh, my God, this is too simple. Uh, now, that has not prevented it from working. It <laughs> continues to work just fine. Uh, my mind just at times just won't accept the simplicity of it. Uh, that's just because I have the same kind of mind that everybody else does. Uh, <laughs> yeah, people are like, oh my God, it's too simple. But it is made extra it is extraordinarily simple. Because you just do the process. You just do the behavior. So Eric, if you were working with somebody, what set of behaviors would you do? It's a very simple set of behaviors that you do. With the client, with the yeah. client, with somebody, yeah. with clients or a group or a work group in front well, of you, you, you get them to Id identify what matters, what's important, yeah. what's important and, to them, and and to write it themselves on the matrix. You can. That's a good way of doing it. What yeah. else do you do? It's one of your tips, <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and <laughs> then then you can ask them. Uh, yeah, do you always? Well, you need to have shown them the five senses mental tour in the way first. Oh, yes. Yeah. So you take them through the structure, first of all. Exactly. Yeah. So they have experience of five senses, right. experience of mental, experience of moving towards and moving away and noticing the difference. Yep. Yeah. And then, then populate the quadrants with their real life perceptions. That's it. Yeah. That's it, really. And the process will work. Just a whole lot of the time, way more than half the time, mm. the process will work. It will just absolutely work. I know I've done it myself, but I have literally hundreds of people doing this, maybe thousands. Yeah. It just works. The process works. Now, your mind later on will convince you that it's way too simple, and you most definitely need to be doing something else because you can't be paid for something so simple. Uh, you know. However, that will not prevent it from working. <laughs> <laughs> it is only your mind. You just need. I guess it's that's my own. My, that's my own mindful thing. I, I learned to take those thoughts for a walk. Right. That's what they call that. Got that act exercise. Taking your mind for a walk. And uh, I take my mind for a walk, and I go back. And now, once I get to doing it with somebody, once I get into the process of doing it with somebody, I'm fine. There's. It's only in between, you know, or especially early in the morning. I've always noticed my own anxiety runs higher early in the morning. It's probably my own circadian rhythm or something. But, so it's around those times. And, oh, my God, Kevin, it's too damn simple. What are you doing? You're crazy. <laughs> but then I'll get on and I'll get to doing it with people. And it works just fine. It's fine. Uh, and, and then it's that. But that, that's really the enemy of this is the simplicity of it. But really, you invite people. Notice the difference between your five senses experiencing and mental experiencing. Notice the difference between how it feels to move toward and away. Now, recall who and what's important to you. Oh, you're not sure about that? Okay, well, we can talk about that a little while. Talk about it enough until you figure out who and what's important to you. There we go. And now while you're telling me, you know, telling me about your life experiences, I'll invite you to talk about 
you know, the away stuff that you're doing and the towards stuff that you're doing and remind you of the who and what's important to you and remind you to notice five senses experiencing and mental experiencing. By the way, in matrix terminology or in act or in relational frame theory terminology, where do people get stuck? Do they get stuck up here in five senses experiencing or they get down here, stuck down here in mental experiencing? Mental. Right. Mm -hmm. Basically, act is there, or the beginnings of act is down there. And what you're doing is moving them up to here. Now moving them up here, moving them up to here. Because you want a nice mix of the two, right? Wow. Being centered, right? There's that meditation kind of term, centered. <laughs> what are you centered on? Uh, so yeah, you want to move. Now you might have to overcompensate them a little bit up here to get them to land right there. But you want to pull them up into the five senses experiencing. Uh, and that's where you can get some of this uh, act for weight loss kind of stuff, which is pretty cool. Or it's not act, but it's mindfulness. So you just get people to savor the moment, let's say, like when they're eating. So don't worry about eating less. Worry about savoring what you eat. And how do you savor? Well, you notice the how you see the food, how you taste the food, how you smell the food. Get the idea? And whatever people are doing that, they're mixing in more of this five senses experiencing and then getting the, the full benefit of whatever the meal is. So that's one that's one example of the kind of stuff that you can do uh, to do that. There's other stuff I'm, you can do, but the basic process is what I've just explained today. But I've explained it before, Eric. You've heard me say yeah. it. Right. Oh, oh, yes, there's a c consistency. But it, the, you're, it's also getting more elegant, I think. <laughs> yeah, I've yeah. noticed that. I've, uh, elegant is actually the word that I use. Maybe I've used it right. I have. There is an elegance to it that I have going these days that I didn't have quite going a year or so ago. Mm. I have yet to stop learning this stuff, folks all on the recording and, and all right now, I'm still learning. I've, I've done, oh my God, I must be well past 20,000 hours of playing with this stuff, which is a lot of man years, uh, person years, every human years, you know, it's like, it's a lot. And, uh, but it, it's, still, it's still learned and I'll make it more elegant and make it easier to access. But in the end, it's that target. I have that target. In the moment, really, I have the psychological flexibility target. I hear somebody talk, and I can sort of hear and see their psychological flexibility. And so then I respond, well, if they're psychologically flexible, I don't need to do anything, right? Because they're there, so that's cool. <laughs> so I don't need to do anything. But if I pick up and I think that they're maybe a little bit on the psychologically inflexible side, which is pretty easy for me to hear these days, then I'll come back with hopefully some words and stuff that create a little bit more psychological flexibility in them. And in not too much time, we'll be back around to, oh, yeah, who's important to you? What's important to you? Back to the flexibility. Oh, yeah, let's, let's flex up a little bit more. Oh, yeah, who's important to you? What's important to you? <laughs> that, that double thing that that yin, go not a yin yang, but two things that I'm basically doing. Uh, and, um, I, I have a, a leftover question. Yes, go for it. Moving um, as as you're describing, as I'm describing the model to someone and getting them to understand the differences in their own experiencing, uh, the transition to applying that to their own life experiences is, is there. Um, a graceful way to take it from giving them information to having them begin to elicit personal information. I'm writing it, okay? So you won't lose it in translation. This is my quote. Dell. That's how. Tell me yeah. about how yes. you have moved toward who and what's important to you. That's my transition. 
And that's how I do it. So right. I say, here's the five senses. Notice, 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 notice. Okay, yeah, you got that. And that's the psychological flexibility model. Is it okay if I work with you from the psychological flexibility model, Bob? Yes, it is. No, thank you. Now, Bob, tell me about how you have moved toward who and what's important to yes. you. Did you hear that transition? Yes, I did. That's how I do it. And so now that invites them to tell me the story. But I, I shade it. I purposely force it over. And this is a act thing. Uh, I'm forcing it over through them telling me about who and what's important. What's the usual typical thing people would say, therapists or coaches would say? Now... Uh, what's the problem? <laughs> Me about, here, we'll do it even worse. All your problems. Now, what's the rest of the session about? <laughs> Ain't it awful? How terrible. Right. Yeah, and, and it is a lot, this is sort of Act 101 stuff. I, this is, uh, don't, don't do that. I mean, I was going to tell you, you know, there's that, somebody was telling me earlier today the Bob Newhart thing um, when he was a therapist on TV. And they'd say, Bob, Bob, what's the answer? And he says, you're going to not going to like my answer. <laughs> oh, come on, come on, tell me your answer. What's your answer? Well, stop doing that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, well, they didn't like that answer. <gasps> but I know so you're not going to like it, but then, then, stop doing this. Don't do that. <laughs> That gets you off in the in the, in Maine. I'm up here in Maine. I'm I'm from Oklahoma, but up here in Maine they have this term called pucker brush. Off in the pucker brush, you know yeah. what it is. You know you don't want to get off in the pucker brush. This is pucker brush over here. No 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 no. Well, that's uh, their true criterion for the person is this who and what's important to them. That is how they are going to know if they're working. But your thing is you're going to know you're working. If you keep seeing psychological flexibility showing up while they're talking about that stuff, that's what you're going to know. That's your target. So don't, but don't do that. So that's how I do the transition. Great. That really helps. Yep. Any other questions? People can email me. And the people who have listened to this thing uh, can uh, email me with questions. I'm pretty free. But do consider going on, and I'll be sending out an announcement to soon about my one of my webinars or you can do one of these uh trainings that i got coming up eight week training on october the first eight week training the matrix with trauma memories on the second i will be, it's not up there yet but i'm pretty sure i'm going to post uh the act matrix with uh chronic pain so i'm going to be doing two at once mm. and then in november i'll do a couple of different ones yeah, here's a quick question, uh, Kevin. In your, in your experience, uh, after the client in session has, perhaps on the first, the first visit or the second visit, populate, sorted, and filled out a matrix, you know, and say, what he's talking well, about is who, who and what's important to you over here, what yep. shows up and gets in the way over here, so what yep. shows up is over here, yep. Yep. and then what do you do to move away, so away moves are over here is what he's yeah. talking about and you do a diagram yeah. and then these exactly. are tor toward moves over here that's what eric is talking right. about go ahead exactly yep and now so you've you've both agreed yeah you know i'm really stuck there on the left i'm going round and around and around up, up. and this is what he's referring to they keep showing up and then you do it again and then you do it again yeah. and then you do it again and then you do it again and god darn it i feel stuck that's it yeah okay now, sh sh I'm thinking, surely some clients are going to say, but how do I stop? Tell me how I stop doing those unhelpful behaviors and start doing, I know what I should be doing, but I'm not. And you're just telling me to notice? Uh, do they not ask for specific assistance in doing more of what's in the top right rather than the top left. No. Not what I do it. No. <laughs> <laughs> no I don't. I'm just going to be honest with you. And I, like, well, I'm on vacation. I'm not on vacation from training this week, but I'm on vacation from doing therapy work and stuff. Yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> so I've done a bunch of this. Nope, 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 nope. That's if you set it up right, they don't ask you that question. They get what you're about. So I say, I, 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 you know, we'll say. I mean, I could say something like this if you want me to role play with you. I can say, well, you know what? The problem is there's a lot of these moves over here that are very workable. You know, they might be keeping you alive or something. And mm -hmm. then there's moves over here that aren't so workable. So the first thing we need to do is notice the difference between the workable ones and the not so workable ones. Mm. And before we can get to that, you know, what you need to stop doing versus what you need to keep on doing. So we probably need to do some of that work first. Is that okay? Mm. Yep. <laughs> that's, okay. that's how I do it. Okay. So I keep some noticing. And by the way, people listening and stuff, I'm not trying to be cute. What the point of that little intervention, those words that I put back toward Eric in a role play kind of fashion, the purpose of them was to keep the person noticing. I switched them to the noticing of the difference between away moves that actually work for valued living versus away moves that don't work and get you stuck. Let's learn first how to notice the difference between those words. But notice, I keep saying the word noticing. I'm backing them up off of those and doing that. Because they're saying, I'm stuck. I've got to get rid of this stuff. Please help me get rid of it. And I'm saying, well, you know, let's hold on. Let's do some noticing first. And later on, we can make a more intelligent decision about that, which is true. That, I'm not holding back on them. It's true. But, but I'm keeping them in that noticing thing. And which, by the way, noticing, in, since we haven't said it, noticing equals, what does it equal over here? I'm giving it to you. <laughs> noticing is a form of psychological flexibility, right? Yes. You're backed yes. up off your experiencing. I'm not saying it's all that, but it's toward mm. equal, or maybe we should put equal. We'll be more mathematically correct. We'll put these squiggly ones. Noticing is sort of kind of equal to psychological flexibility. Yeah. So that, that noticing language that you hear me invoked with somebody like that that's stuck is me just keeping the psychological flexibility thing going. Remember the target is psychological flexibility for me. And then getting them in that process. So how did that help? Mm. Yes. yes, it really is but that it, simple. <laughs> no, oh yeah, it is. It really is that simple. It's, yeah, I know. Now, probably at 6 o'clock this morning, I wasn't convinced of that. But it's now it's 6 o'clock in the evening, so I'm, I'm, I'm cooking now. It's, yep, it's that simple. <laughs> <laughs> and, Kevin, have you really dropped all, all of that, all of those act techniques for... Diffusion. Oh no! Oh no! You're bringing me out of the closet. Oh no! <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> you do. No, I don't. I don't do any of those. No. You don't. You don't do any of that. Oh. <laughs> no, I just, it just doesn't. No, no passengers in buses. <laughs> oh, I do the bus. Oh, you do the bus. Okay. Yeah, but crap, man. I, you know, except for the card sort thing that the bus was originally, and then I went to making it live in groups and all kinds of stuff and having it's just too much theatrical fun. And as if anybody can't tell from even the sound of my voice, I'm a bit theatrical. Uh, and so I love doing buses, but probably more than anything because I love doing buses. Uh, they're okay. They're fine. That's so, but don't need to. I do them in the context of, uh, of uh, programs. You know, so like you're doing a several session program, like an act for pain program or a substance abuse program that I do. Mm -hmm. And so we, we include buses as part of that overall programming just because we need to fill in time, you know, do stuff with people. And it makes it more entertaining. And buses, and if I do them, like if I come down to New York City and do a day long, Bob, at one o'clock there's going to be a bus. You can put it on your calendar. <laughs> <laughs> I better look at ways. What's that? 
better look both ways when I step off the curb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is going to be a bus. And why do I do a bus? Because they're lively and theatrical. Gets everybody involved. And what? Which would you rather hear? A lecture about, uh, uh, you know, covariate analysis at one o'clock after you ate lunch, or would you rather play around doing a bus? Yeah, I think I'll take the bus. Right. They're a whole lot more fun. Keeps everybody awake. Keeps me awake. It's just a whole lot more fun. It's better. So, I mean, there are useful little to do that. But like diffusion and values work and all that regular stuff of that. I know it all, and I'm a certified act trainer. Not certified. Peer-reviewed act trainer. I'm all that. I can do that. But in my real everyday world that Eric is pulling mm-hmm. me out on, no. Nah, mm-hmm. <laughs> Mm. for buses, but no, yeah. I don't do any of that stuff. Not, the 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 target is psychological flexibility and noticing if people are psychologically flexible in their pursuit of valued life directions. If I hear once I get somebody there, I'm good. I don't. And as far as I know, and I'm sure it's true, other people can invent in other invent other shorthand ways of doing that other than what I have done, and. As long as it's workable and gets people in that direction, it's cool, right? So I invite anybody to go spend a few thousand hours or maybe only a few tens of hours and figure out another simple way. ACT is just sort of a, a long way. The ACT hexaflex is bigger. And you can get lost. So I, I don't want people to get lost. I want you to make it simple. So ACT made extraordinarily simple is, remember, The target is about bringing people into a process, a process of maintaining or increasing their psychological flexibility in the presence of knowing who and what's important to them. Keep that target in mind and throw out the matrix and have a good time. Yeah, that's great. Thanks very much, Kevin. <laughs> okay, and I'll be back sometime soon with another something. I don't know what i got going on next week, but I'll have something. Really? Right. Uh, thank you much. Thank you. Cheers. Uh, okay. Goodbye, Maine. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Australia. <laughs> Bye-bye, New York City. Let's see. Where am I? <laughs>